you ready to arise? Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, come on. You can do better than that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, thank you. Much better. Okay, Mission Central. Here's the latest. Jonathan is due to arrive in Kinshasa at 1220 this morning. So we're praying him through all the way, right? Everybody got that's our time, 1220. And Susie and Ed Kiefer are en route 495, coming back from D.C. even as we speak. Let's give God some praise for that. <laughs> Jacqueline Kiefer already home. Welcome back, Jackie. Welcome home. Congo Mission Central. I have a few brief announcements to share with you. We welcome everyone who's here this morning, everyone who joins in our worship services through website and DVD ministry. We are functioning under the old soundboard from 20 Baltimore Avenue this morning. So we give grateful thanks to God, to our sound crew who have been scrambling for the past few weeks for making it possible for us to be able to hear one another this morning. A few announcements to share. My honor, my privilege to introduce to you Reverend Boyd Edder, our district superintendent. <laughs> Boyd is with us this morning to bring the message, and it is a blessed message indeed, so I know that you will appreciate it. He and his wife, Linda, who is right here. Here's Linda. They are residents of Long Neck, and so we are blessed to have them with us in worship often, but today is the first time we've had Boyd deliver the message, so I know you will be blessed by it. Because it is the first Sunday, it isn't the second Sunday of the month, it is Belongings today, and so we will meet in Scott's Chapel at 1215. Anyone interested in becoming a member of this Epworth Church family, we invite you to join us for lunch, for fellowship, and for sharing our stories. Again, 1215 today in Scott's Chapel. Jennifer Ford is with us. Jennifer, where are you? Wonderful. There she is. This is Jennifer Ford. You welcome Jennifer. She is from DFS, Department of Delaware Families, Department of Family Services. And she is here because of the initiative of the state of Delaware to connect families with children in need of foster care and adoption. We all know the stories of our own Riley Spillane family who have blessed us by the witness that they have with so many children that they brought here to worship with them. And so Jennifer is going to be here to talk to you today. She will be in Fellowship Hall. If you have questions, you're interested, you want to ask her any potential at all, then Jennifer is the person you want to see. Thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> Next week, Midge Smith Gallery in Lewis, 2nd Street on the 2nd floor. Art for a Purpose. That gallery is offered to give a share of their proceeds from their art sales next weekend to benefit Epworth Church Visual Arts Program. If you're in downtown Lewis next week, next weekend, please take a moment, stop in, see Midge Smith, and thank her for being willing to support the visual arts program here at Epworth and maybe even buy a piece of art, which would be wonderful. Elise Seifried is here next week with us. She is part of the duo that started Rehoboth Summer Children's Theater so many years ago in the basement of Epworth at 20 Baltimore. She has written a second book, and Elise and I will sit here and talk about her book, about her writing, and about her journeys with God. She's a wonderful writer and a great Christian witness, so I encourage you next weekend to come and, and hear Elise talk. We'll be here at 7 o'clock on Sunday night. We are still collecting for our kids, for book pack, backpacks, book bags, all kinds of school supplies. There is a basket at each door, Oceanside, Bayside. If you can put things that you've collected in there, the kids would really appreciate it, and I know that it will be a blessing to them and to you. Coming soon, Artapalooza. Have you put it on your calendar yet? It's the weekend of September 7th, 8th, and 9th, and I think we have an announcement about that this morning. Tell me what's happening. Tell me what's happening. What's the buzz? Tell me what's happening. What's the buzz? Tell me what's happening. Hey, Kenny. Hey, Billy. What's the buzz, man? What's going on? What's the buzz? Yeah, what's the buzz? Y'all know our good friend, Joe and uh, Picorni. He and his wife, Joe, sit normally in the back seat of uh, the sanctuary at the 930 service. A couple years ago, Joe was, uh, I'm sorry, Ted was diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease. And we've watched him decline over the last couple of years. <clears throat> Joe and Ted have dedicated their lives 
now to raising funds for people with ALS and for finding a cure for this dreaded neuromuscular disease that we see Ted battling with every day. Well, on September 9th, I'm getting my head shaved. Now, I know, I know that God already started, <laughs> but the rest of it's going to go. And I'm accepting donations, sponsors, for getting my head shaved. And uh, it's the least that I could do for Ted and for all the people suffering with Lou Gehrig's disease. And they do suffer. It is a terrible disease. Well, I've been having a couple of bad hair days. I think maybe I should probably do the same thing. You think maybe? Bad? <laughs> You get a rim shot. How's that? Terrible hair days, it looks like to me. Oh, they've been a little rough. Uh, All kidding aside, folks, the 7th, 8th, and 9th. Um, I look like a highlighter, okay? Okay, okay, a um, highlighter. 7th, 8th, and 9th of September is our three days for our big fundraiser. We're at camp on the 7th with a wine-tasting food and dessert pairing. The 8th is our huge art sale, which has been supported by m so many local artisans that have donated their work um, so that we can raise money. And then on that Sunday on the 9th, at noon, after service, anybody wants to come, we're back at camp. There's five of us that have already committed to have their heads shaved to help raise money for this disease. We're right across the hall today. We have pledge sheets if anybody would like to pledge for this one or me. <laughs> and we appreciate your, no Kenny. Yeah. No Kenny. Okay. We appreciate we, your help. No, yes. Kenny. No. Yes, yes. No yes, Kenny. Yes, Not yes, till yes, the ninth. Yes, Sorry yes, folks, yes. gotta run. Whoa. Worshiping for the first time. Anybody first time at Epworth? First time, first time. We have a gift for you. Yay. Anyone over here first? Here we got one. Okay. <laughs> Wayne, there's, there's one right here. Raise your hand again. We've got one right up here. And here. Yes. Look. Over here. 930, I invite you to stand and greet one another in the love and the peace of Christ.
morning, boys and girls. Oh, good morning, boys and girls. Good morning. Thank you. <laughs> it's good to see you this morning. How are you? Are you good? Are you tired? Is everybody tired? Are you tired? Little, little tired. Okay. Do you want to play a game? I thought maybe we could play a game this morning. Would that be fun? Yes. Good. Who knows how to play freeze tag? Do you know how to play freeze tag? How do you play it? Oh, there's a way to, that's one way to play it. All right, here's how we're going to play it. I'm going to tell you some stories. Have you ever been afraid? Have you ever been afraid of anything? Anybody ever been afraid of anything? I've been afraid of some things. Yeah. So we're going to tell a story, and then when I say freeze, everybody's going to stop. And what's going to free us is this phrase, fear not. Can you say that after me? Say, fear not. So there were a lot of times in the Bible when there were stories about the people who loved Jesus and who knew God got afraid, like the circumstances that they were in scared them. Things that were happening to them really scared them. And God always said that to them. He said, fear not. Can you say that again? Fear not. Can you say that? Fear not. And somebody once told me that that phrase, fear not, is in the Bible 365 times. So I think that's because God really meant it, right? All right, so you stand up. Everybody stand up. And now we're going to be the Egyptians in the desert, okay? Let's pretend we're walking in the desert, walking in the desert. Everybody walking in the desert, walking, walking. And we're trying, walking, walking. We can do this, right? Walking in the desert, and we're trying to get away from the bad people who are going to put us in slavery, right? So we're walking a little fast. Yeah, we're walking faster, faster, a little faster, because we really want to get away from them. And then all of a sudden, freeze! We meet the water, oh, and there's water in front of us, and there's bad guys behind us, and there's nowhere to go. And we are so afraid that we're frozen in our tracks. And what does God say? Fear not. All right. Okay, this time, let's pretend we're shepherds. Hmm. Let's pretend we're shepherds. And we're out, we're out in the woods, and we're, we're watching the sheep. Watch the sheep. Watch the sheep, looking at the sheep, making sure the sheep are okay. And it's getting dark, thank you. Getting dark. And we look up in the sky, and we see all of these angels. <gasps> Freeze. All those angels. It's like, I'm, you don't look frozen at all. You, <laughs> not even close to frozen. All these angels are up in the sky, and they start singing, and they start making loud noises, and we're really scared, scared, scared. And what does God say through the angels? Fear not. Okay. All right, this time, let's be the disciples in the boat. And they're rowing the boat, and they're rowing the boat, and then all of a sudden a storm comes up. And they're hanging on the side of the boat. Whoa, 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 there's a boat. Whoa, whoa, watch out. Here goes a boat. Hang on to the boat. Hang on, hang on. And then they see somebody standing on the water. Freeze. <gasps> somebody standing on the water in the middle of a storm? And who is it? Do you remember? Jesus. It's Jesus. And what does he say to them? Fear not. Fear not. Thank you for being here this morning. <laughs> You're such a good plant. So we have to remember that no matter what happens, wherever we are in life, something comes up that scares us. God will always say to us what? Fear not. All right, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us so much that you are always with us. And we never need to be afraid. <laughs> Watch over us and guide us wherever we go in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Good job today, boys and girls. Good job. Please stand. Let's sing. God loves us so much that he sent his son to die for us. But before he did that, he came to this earth to show us how we ought to live. So let's sing.
to this earth for us. And when we can recognize that and fully embrace that, that is when we are called to draw near to him. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 21, and since we have a great high priest who rules over God's people, let us go right into the presence of God with true hearts, fully trusting in him. And so this morning, that is hopefully the prayer of each one of our hearts, is to ask God to draw us close to him and draw us nearer into his presence so that we can feel his loving arms wrapped around us whenever things seem a little rough at times. Jesus said, he who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. Feed us with your spirit, Lord. Draw us close to you. 
We come this morning with our joys and concerns. We'll be coming out to you in a moment, but first the list of the ones we have. For concerns today, Ethan, a young Marine deployed to Afghanistan and recently injured, and to his family. To Judy Chilton, Velma Ferguson, Tiffany Hart, Marion Hatch, Pat Hummel, Anthony Hunt, Kitty Marsh, Moselle Pyle, Nan Rule, Dorothy Sadler, Fred Seltzer, George Wall, Elizabeth West, Chuck Wilson, Jerry Auster, Austerholt, Joe Hall, and for Jonathan and his team in the Congo. Today we light the peace candle and pray for peace with justice throughout the world. We also ask for continued healing for those recovering from surgeries, procedures, and hospitalizations. Lillian Halverson, Marshall Jones, Rose Barcelona, Joseph Hall, Blanche Andrews, Muriel Mayer, Bryant Brundage, Brantley Melvin, and John Riley Spillane. We come also with joys this morning to Grandpa and Grandpa Phil, Phil and Stacia Wilson and new parents Joe and Caroline Udinsky on the birth of their first child, a girl, Eliana Udinsky, on, on August 9th. To Grandma Sherry Greener on her first grandchild and to new parents Taryn and Frank on the birth of Fallon Michelle on August 9th. And for Lori Smelter and Alan Biggs, who will be married here at Epworth this week. We'll bring the microphones out to you now if you have joys and concerns to share. I think I would like to give thanks for your prayers of my friend Gil, who had a very good operation uh, removing his tumors. And for my friend John, that also has cancer, and he's doing very well, so I thank you for your prayers. And my friend Shell and Timothy ask to ask the people of Epworth to pray for them because they want to quit smoking, and they believe that the people of Epworth praying for them will help them to quit smoking. So please do so, Shelley and Timothy. Thank you. Good morning to all of you. I'm sure that you are all very excited to know what's been going on with my heart because three weeks ago, I had asked for your prayers, and my heart's fine. So now I can go back to my fishing tournaments next month. So you can pray for me, I'll be good to my fishing tournaments. So if you pray for me, your prayers mean so much to me, and I really want to thank the Lord for this wonderful place. Thank you all for your prayers. Thank you. I would like to ask for prayers for a deaf school in Kenya that we have been working with for about 10 years. We have a partnership, and we've been there for five mission teams. Uh, the area is suffering with a lot of drought. Uh, we have a, a group that has been funding a, the digging of a well for the last six months, and they're just hitting damp ground at 150 feet. So they've got one more week that they're working. The kids have like one cup of water a day to be shared for each kid for food, drink, washing, everything. So please pray for Ngia Special School and this project to get some order. Thank you. Good morning. I'd like to ask for prayers for the Cordial family upon the death of Tom Cordial. Thank you. Good morning, church. How are you? Thank you. I've been asked to bring a thank you to you. Um, what used to be the international student dinners on Tuesday night, uh, that became the student dinners on Tuesday night, which have now just really become the dinner at Epworth on Tuesday nights. Um, 
the people that are there, um, the, we have skateboarders that are enjoying dinner with us. Um, neighbors um, just walk in off the street and sit down and have a meal. And the students are here. Um, and they're just so appreciative. And there were several of them last Tuesday asked me to say thank you to you because they're really having a hard time understanding where this is coming from. And it was easy for us to explain it to them, but it was important for you to know that um, they wanted to say thank you for being the hands and the feet of uh, Jesus and God in Christ here on the earth. So thank you very much. You've done a great job. There are only two weeks left. And there is a huge potluck on Tuesday night after Labor Day that everyone's welcome to come and just sit down and uh, have a great time. So thanks, Penny. Let us pray. Awesome God, draw us close to you this morning. Wrap us in the warm embrace and feed us with your Holy Spirit. Oh Lord, we come to you this morning feeling drained by the world around us. We come bearing private burdens. We come with hurting bodies and minds. We come distracted by stress and anxiety. We come feeling starved for the deep refreshment that comes only when we surrender ourselves totally to your amazing love. Hear our prayers this day, O Lord, the ones we've spoken aloud and the ones we hold close to our hearts. We want to touch your healing presence, God, and we want to see your love shared with the world around us. Help us to care for one another and this planet we call home. Help us to fight hunger and homelessness, to encourage peace over war, and to fully understand how you are calling us to respond to those in need around us. Awesome God, we stand before you this morning with grateful hearts for the incredible gifts you have given to each one of us. We thank you for a church whose presence is vital to the life of our community. We thank you for its open doors that extend a lavish welcome to all who come near. Most of all, Lord, we thank you for the gift of your Son and the amazing grace that comes from his constant presence in our lives. Through him we are fed. Through him our deep thirst is quenched. And in him we find the strength and the faith and the hope and the joy we need to carry on with our lives. Feed us this day with your spirit, Lord. Draw us close to you. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the word. Today's lesson comes from the Gospel according to John, chapter 6, verses 35, followed by 41 to 51. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. 
Then the Jews began to complain. They complained about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me. And I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that everyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God for the privilege of sharing the word with you today. I bring you greetings from Bishop Peggy Johnson and colleagues on our cabinet, including in the extended cabinet, one who is moving forward, uh, the former superintendent of this district, uh, now Bishop Sandra Steiner Ball, who was elected in July and is moving on to West Virginia, where she has been assigned. And I know that our prayers go with her and her family as they make this transition. We also thank God for your devotion to raising funds for research for that dread disease called ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. Just this past week, we said farewell to Pastor Don Murray, who suffered from that disease for a lengthy season. Prior uh, to that, he had served St. Paul's Church in Laurel for 16 years. An amazing Christian witness uh, both during his active ministry, when the congregation grew from seven, seven people to 160, and through uh, the, uh, the effects of this disease uh, upon his life and his family and his church family. Let us pray. Most gracious God, open our hearts and illumine our minds as we hear your word that we would receive with joy what you say to us today. Grant always that the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts would be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I don't know about you, but I love those all-you-can-eat buffets. You know, the ones with the scrumptious salads, endless entrees, and delightful desserts. And of course, here near the beach, there are always all-you-can-eat seafood buffets as well. We remember Andy Rooney, who always had a, a feature on uh, 60 Minutes, that Sunday night news program. His last appearance was last October, and, and he, uh, he died just a few short weeks later at the age of 92. But there was that time when Andy created quite a stir by pointing out that the number one type of nonfiction on the bestseller list were cookbooks. Then he quickly turned to the number two uh, best-selling type of nonfiction, diet books. That seems like a complete contradiction, doesn't it, in a way? With eyes at least as large as our stomachs, we begin leafing through cookbooks trying to find the most tempting and tasty recipes 
And then we quickly turn to the diet books to determine that we really can't eat all we want. And yet we should not be surprised because food has always solicited strong and sometimes those completely contradictory reactions in our human race. Here in North America, so many have become convinced that we really can't eat everything we want, where in Asia and Africa, the opposite is true. Millions are searching for their next meal, wondering where it will come from. In fact, as we speak, Jonathan, your senior pastor, is in the Congo, and he's part of a team researching ways to develop new means that will provide better nutrition in a part of the world where that is so desperately needed. But we must be mindful of hunger here at home as well, and, and so it's all important that we continue to support our food banks and our food pantries, such as that which you work with cooperatively through the Lewis Rehoboth Association of Churches. You know, the uh, Department of Agriculture used to provide a food pyramid. And at the foundation of that food pyramid were such things as rice, pasta, and bread. The food pyramid has given way to a food plate, a plate sectioned off, showing us the different food groups that are an important part of a balanced diet, to be sure. Now, there are a lot of diet books out there. They're being published by the dozens every day, it seems. And many of those will insist that bread is bad for us, but it's not so much that bread is bad for us as that whole grain bread is better. Now, what's best for our bellies also has something to say to us about strengthening our spiritual lives, we need our minimum daily requirement of Jesus. He uses some pretty strong, striking language in today's text, however. He actually invites us to feed on him, and perhaps we can see why there were those skeptics in the early church who accused Christians of being cannibalistic, but early Christian thinkers and theologians like Justin Martyr wrote at great length to convince the culture that this was simply not true. But to tell the truth, consuming all we can of Jesus is good for us. In fact, studies show that committed Christians live longer on the average than the rest of the population. We'd like to think this is because committed Christians are committed to leading healthier lifestyles. It's certainly no coincidence that Jesus uses the image of bread to describe the most basic elements of spiritual health. He declares here, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me, will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. All of our minimum daily requirements of God's good gifts of grace, love, and forgiveness are the foundation of eternal life and are found in that life-giving relationship with Jesus, our Savior. Now, it's important to weigh all the information we're receiving this day about what's healthy to eat. Some say don't eat eggs because they contain high levels of cholesterol. Others argue that they contain good cholesterol and are an important way of providing protein in our diet. Some say cut out the coffee because coffee contains caffeine hard on our hearts and yet others contend that coffee has now been shown to be a preventative of Parkinson's disease, diabetes, and even colon cancer. Some who saw Jesus for the first time in the first century were ready to dismiss him 
as simply the son of Joseph and Mary, simply a 30-something carpenter and contractor. They were reminiscent of the naysayer Nathaniel, who in the first chapter of the same Gospel of John skeptically asked, can anything good actually come out of Nazareth? Skeptics were convinced that Christ Jesus was just some fad that would fade into a dark corner behind the bestsellers. But those who believed noticed that Jesus looked like manna, that meager but life-sustaining substance that God gave in what otherwise would have been a time of hunger and virtual starvation. God gave just enough of that miraculous manna to sustain the people in the wilderness. But the next day they would wake up hungry all over again, knowing that they would need to break the fast once again. The truth be known, no matter how healthy our diet, no matter how often and how well we count our carbs and cholesterol and calories, the day will come when this physical life will end. And so what Jesus offers us is, oh, so essential, because what is essential is also eternal in nature. In fact, the best news of all is this, what Jesus offers us feeds us now, and when this physical life is over. There's a hymn many of us have sung over the years, and we continue to sing it on occasion today. And the lyrics are like this, Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Jesus definitely declares, I am the living bread which came down from heaven, Whoever eats of this food will live forever. I would confess to you today that until a few short months ago, I was a, another junk food junkie. I do a lot of driving around Kent and Sussex counties, and, and until a few short months ago, I, I scarcely uh, took a trip without munching another bag of chips or pretzels. I've always been partial to salty snacks rather than sweets. But uh, Linda once again inspired me, as she has so many times over the years, to start being more conscious of diet and taking time to exercise. And so when we work out at one of the local gyms, we see some of you there as well. Thanks be to God. Now, we will not live forever in this present physical body, no, how, no matter how attentive we are to disciplines of diet, exercise, and adequate rest. But we are promised in Jesus a life that never ends if we, by faith, will simply place our hand in the hand of Jesus. If we will ask him to feed us with that living bread that fills us and satisfies us like nothing else. There is Lent, that six-week season, in which we particularly pause to ponder God's greatest act of sacrificial love, the, the death of Christ upon the cross for your sin and mine. But on the first Sunday in that season, we typically consider that Jesus, in his full humanity, as well as his full divinity, was tempted even as we are. One of the temptations thrust before Jesus was the temptation to turn stones into bread, for he was extremely hungry, famished after a time of fasting. Jesus resisted that temptation by offering this word that we shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds forth from the mouth of God. And Jesus was not inventing a new saying, he was actually quoting the Bible that he read, the Old Testament, the book of Deuteronomy. Beyond best-selling cookbooks and diet books, after all, is the Word of God, the Bible, the bestseller, 
of all time because the Bible contains all we need to be filled and fed and satisfied until we want no more. Bishop Will Willimon recently retired being the spiritual leader of the United Methodists in the Birmingham, Alabama area. And Bishop Willimon's words remind us that in today's text, we are pushed to a decision. When Jesus declares, I am the bread of life, we can no longer avoid making the decision to which we are called. We have to decide, is Jesus really who he says he is? Or are we going to seek spiritual nourishment elsewhere? Will we really think that he can feed us all that we need? Or are we going to think that we can actually find wholesome, spiritually nourishing food elsewhere? May God guide us and lead us to that bread that feeds us, that fills us like nothing else and like no one else except Jesus, our Savior and our Lord. Thanks be to God.
gracious, loving, amazing God, we are hungry and thirsty for you in our lives, in our homes, in our neighborhoods, and in our world this day, where people are crying, desperate to hear the good news of your love. Lord, we ask that you would take what we have, that you would take who we are, and use us, Lord, for your work in this world. Let us be, let us continue to be your hands and your feet, wherever it is you need us. Wherever you place us, Lord, let us do your work. Let us be there for you. And let us always remember that there, you are there with us. Take who we are, take what we have, Lord, and let all of it bring glory to your holy name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Take a moment. Blue Fellowship pad is on the end of the rows. Sign in, pass it down. It lets you know who's here worshiping with you on a Sunday morning. It lets us know who's here with us. And if you have a pastoral need or concern, you can write it down on that pad. Give 
give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. Power and the glory are yours Having been fed with the bread of life, may we go forth to serve God, our Father and Creator, God, the Son and Redeemer, God, the Holy Spirit and Sustainer. Amen. Amen. Today we're going to leave chanting his praises and proclaiming his name. <laughs>